In this video, we're going to look at how to enter financial transactions in Microsoft Dynamics Business Central. First, we'll look at how to enter basic general journals, along with how to copy and paste them directly from Excel. We'll also look at how to void a general journal, and then how to enter a recurring and a reversing general journal. First, we'll just enter a basic general journal transaction. I'll go to Finance, General Journal, and then I'll just select the default batch that we have out here. I'm gonna change my posting date. I'll leave my document type as blank, and then I'll enter in a document number. My account type will be GL account, and then I'll select my account number. I could either type this in if I know it, or I could start to enter the first couple numbers with an asterisk. And now I can see my four zero accounts. I'll pick my uh, income. Now I'm going to enter a credit amount. Now in my example, I have a column for debit and a column for credit. You can choose if you want yours to display this way or if you want a single column that just shows amount with a positive and negative value. And that setting is found in the general ledger setup window. I have mine as a debit and credit column. One thing you could do is if you have a simple one-sided journal entry that you need to enter, you could enter this all in one line. And this will work great as long as you're okay with using the same dimension code for both the debit and the credit side of the entry. So I'm going to show that first as an example. So I already filled in my credit, now I'll choose my debit account. And I'll just pick a uh, an expense account. And now I just need to fill in my dimension. So I have a dimension for department and customer group. I'm gonna fill in my uh, department dimension. Now I have a single general journal with my debit and credit all in one line. I could preview this if I'd like. If I go to post and then preview, just to make sure that everything looks good. And I can see that it's gonna credit my sales account, debit my expense account. And then when I'm ready, I can just go to post and post that entry. So that works really well if you just have a one-sided entry. If you have multiple debits and credits, it's pretty similar. We'll just fill in our first account. And we'll use the same department code. And we'll just put in a debit amount. And then we'll do the same thing on the next line. So you want to keep the same document number since this is all one entry. And then I'll look up the account that starts with sales by typing in the actual word this time. And I can see all my accounts that have sales in them. I'll choose the same department code. And then I'll put uh, $20 as the credit and then I'll break that out with an additional account. I can also click F8 anytime I'm in any field if I want to automatically populate the same value as the field above it. So I just clicked F8 and now sales appeared in that field. I'll put my remaining uh, credit amount here and now I have a balanced entry. I can again preview that. And everything looks good. I can see my department is assigned. Now I can just post that entry. So those general journals are pretty easy to enter. Now, if you have entries in Excel that you'd like to automatically copy and paste, you could do that as well. So what I like to do is first just highlight the entire line and then I'll just copy and then I'm gonna open up an Excel file. Now I'm just going to file. That'll give me the format and just kind of the overall layout that I need uh, to be able to enter that transaction in, the, in, in Excel so I can paste it directly into Business Central. I'm going to change my document number. Now I just need to fill in my account numbers. So I'll do the same thing and I'll actually just copy this line down a couple times to make it easier. 
and now I'll change this account number. And I'll change this account number. I'll make this an expense account. And then of course, I want to move this over so I have a 200 debit amount. So now I have everything I need to copy and paste this entry back into Business Central. So of course, I could enter a super long entry if I need to. I can have it coming from another system in Excel, and then I just need to make sure I get it in this format. One thing to keep in mind is it is important that your columns match exactly to what you have in Business Central. That's why I like to copy it from Business Central first and paste it in Excel just to make sure that all my columns match up. At this point, I will just highlight the contents of all those cells and I'll copy. I'll go back in here. And I found the easiest way to paste is to just highlight that first field. Um, sometimes you'll get errors if you don't, if you, if you have your cursor in a different field or you haven't highlighted the whole field. Like that. So you'll want to kind of unselect that and then just highlight that first field. There. So it can be a little uh, tedious with where you put your cursor, but I found that that method works best. So I can actually just delete this first line that I started here. And you'll notice that I pasted all those entries and they look exactly as we saw them in Excel. So now I can go to post and I can post my entry. And now I've successfully posted that general journal that I copied and pasted from Excel. Now, if I had decided that there was uh, an error and I needed to reverse out or void that entry, I just need to do a search for GL and then open up the GL register. And I can see this is the entry that I just posted and I can verify that if I go to process general ledger, I could see it was trained too. So to void that, all I need to do is just go to reverse and reverse register. It'll confirm that I want to reverse all those entries. In this case, I do. So I just click reverse and enter yes. And then I click OK. And now that entry was reversed. So now I can see my original entry. And then there's also a reversal. I go back to my window. I can now see my reversal as well. I could also just refresh. But here's the reversal, and then there's the original entry. The other thing I could do is if I have to enter recurring entries, when I'm back in this general journal window, if I go to navigate recurring general journal, I can set up a recurring entry. Right now we have the batch called default, but you could also click here and you could click new and you could give it a name to describe what this recurring entry is going to be. So now we're in the rent batch. For the recurring entry, first I just need to tell it what kind of recurring entry it will be. If it's fixed, it will maintain the dollar amount every time you post it. If it's variable, it'll keep the account numbers, but you'll need to put in the amounts each time. And then balance will actually automatically reverse out whatever the balances of those accounts are. And then the same concept applies, except for reversing, it'll automatically reverse out the transaction on the following day. So first we'll just enter a, a regular fixed recurring transaction. Now, what I like to do for recurring frequency, you could just put 1M and then it would just be a monthly entry. Um, but what I like to do is I, I like to put in this formula. So if I put in 1D plus 1M minus 1D, what that will do is it'll actually make sure that your entry always posts uh, at the end of the month. So we could put in November 30th as an example. We'll leave our document type as blank. We'll put in uh, a document number. I also like to use a code when I'm doing recurring entries for my document number. So I could put in the word rent, and then if I put in a percent four, that will put the 
the name of the month automatically for me so I don't have to fill that in as my document number. Now I just need to fill in my account numbers and I will put in the dimension Post that section up and then I'll put in my amount. So here I could use my amount or my debit amount. I'll use my debit amount column. And then I'll go to my next line. I'll use the F8 key to just copy that down with the same date and document number and everything. And then I'll pick um, another account. And I'll pick a different uh, department this time. And then I'll enter my uh, last entry. And then I'll put in my credit amount. So I have a simple uh, recurring entry here with different uh, departments. Everything balances out and looks like it's ready to go. So I can go to post and then preview just to make sure. And then I can just go to post and post when I'm ready to post that entry. Oh, I actually need to change my date though because it's uh, my work date is in May, so I actually need this entry to be before May or I need to change my work date. So in this case, we'll just change our work date. So I'll go up to my settings, my settings, and I'll put this to today, just 12 case. Now I should be able to post. So you'll notice the lines were successfully posted and you'll notice that it automatically updated the date. So since I had this formula in here, if I just had one M, it would have been 1230. But since I put in this formula, it knew to add and go to the end of the month. So it's 1231. And then you'll notice it kept all the dollar amounts in here for next time since this was a fixed recurring entry. I want to take a look at that. This time I'll go to the general uh, ledger entries windows. And I'll sort my posting date I'll make that descending I can now see my entry that I posted as November 30th so you'll notice that the document number was automatically filled in with the November description for me and then it shows my entries here the same process can be used if I wanted to enter a reversing entry the only difference is I would change this to reversing. Uh, in this example, I'll try reversing variables so you can see that example. So again, the variable just means that the accounts will stay as part of the batch, but you'll have to enter the amounts. I'll update my date, bring that back to 1130. And I think I'll leave everything else the same. So now we pretty much have the same entry. We have our recurring entry, except this time it's reversing. So the reversing will just automatically reverse out the entry on the following day. So in this case, December 1st. So I'll go to post and post again. Oh, actually, I'm gonna preview this first just so you can see. If I go to preview, you can actually see that it's gonna create the additional entries. So we only have three in this window, but you'll notice it has six. So here it's showing that this is gonna be our original entry. And then it also shows the reversal that will take place automatically on December 1st. And I can post that. That was successfully posted. And you'll notice that since I have this formula in here, it automatically updated my date to 1231 for next month. This way, when I enter this, it'll reverse on 1-1. One -one. And then it kept my account numbers and dimensions this time, but the amounts are now zero. So next month when I open up this batch called rent, I would need to fill in my amounts. And I can take a look at that. I go to the GL register window or the general ledger entries window. And I can see here's the one that I just posted. I could go to process general ledger and see all the details. So since this was a reversing entry, I can see the full uh, originating entry and the reversal all as one entry. And I can also see that in the general ledger entry window under archive. 
I'll sort by descending again and I can see my entries. So I could see my reversal as well that went through this time. So here's my November entry and then here's my December 1st reversal. So that covers all the basic transaction processing in the general ledger module. So we went through how to enter general journals, how to copy and paste them from Excel, how to avoid them or reverse them out, and then how to enter recurring journals as well.